Hello, welcome to Study Smart. In this video tutorial, we will be seeing IELTS listening skill. IELTS, which is an international English language testing system, is taken by students in order to see the proficiency of them. This test contains four skills, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Listening is one of the skills in IELTS in which you listen to an audio recording which is played for 30 minutes and you have to answer 40 questions in total. The audio recording is split into four different parts which used to be known as sections before. Each part contain 10 questions for you to answer. As you go from part one to part four, the level of trickiness increases because of the stronger paraphrasing. IELTS listening is one of the most simplest skills in which normally students get band nine. The major challenge that students do confront in IELTS listening is understanding the accent, is also spelling mistakes, as well as staying in a sequence. The questions that you listen to by the speaker will be based on four different aspects. In part one, you listen to a dialogue a speech between two people delivering, you know, conversation, having a conversation, trying to achieve information from each other, like maybe name, address, telephone number, things like that. Part two is a monologue where you expect one person to deliver a speech, trying to make a general awareness. Part three, you listen to a conversation between two and four people where you expect listening to a lot of agreements, disagreements, reaching to a final conclusion. And part four, you listen to again a monologue which is going to be specific on an academic context. Now, in order to gain, um, gain high score in listening, see, you must remember a few things. First of all, as we know that it's of 30 minutes, obviously the test is going to last for 30 minutes. After that, you will be given 10 minutes to write your answers on the answer sheet if you are taking a paper-based test. If you are taking a computer delivered test, then you will be given only two minutes to review your answers that you have typed. Now, when I say that you have 10 minutes to write your answer on the answer sheets, which means that you will be given a question booklet, write your answers on it. Maybe in pathetic and writing, doesn't matter, or abbreviations, anything like that. But when you transfer your answers on the answer sheet, you need to be very clear that you write your answers in capital letters only and in full words. No abbreviations. Nowhere in IELTS, remember, you are required to write anything in short forms or abbreviations. Be it your reading, listening, writing. Now, there are 40 questions in total. Each question carries one mark. So the best part is there is no negative marking. Make sure you attempt all the questions. Now, time is the key, obviously. For each part, you will have time to look at the questions as instructed by the speaker. So in the recording only, you'll be told that you have some time to look at questions one to five. Whatever questions are spoken to you to look at, have attention on those questions only. Leave the rest. Because for every question numbers, you will be given some time. Not each, like one question. There will be like five questions, you know, four questions, something like that. You will be getting to know. Because the recording is always played in a sequence from 1 to 40, so you don't have to worry about the sequence. However, underlining the keywords is going to help you. See, there are some words that are written in the question booklet which will be spoken exactly the same by the speaker. This is how you will be able to maintain your sequence. Now, both general training and academic candidates take the same listening test. There is no difference at all. Now, in IELTS listening, the few tips I would like to share. First of all, always read the instruction word. Every single question type that you come across, be it short answer type questions, fill ups, you know, note filling, multiple choice questions or anything. You will be getting an instruction word written, which will be in capital letters. You must read them to understand how many words you have to write. Second, you underline the keywords. In the question prompt, there will be some proper nouns which you must underline. Because you will know immediately that these words will be spoken as it is. No synonym. For example, bedroom, for example, kitchen, you know, sunroom, things like that. Then 
you must identify what you need to listen for. What I mean by that is by reading the question prompt, you'll be able to know that whether you're listening for a word or a number. If it is a word, what kind of word it could be? Is it going to be a place name? Is it going to be a thing? Is it going to be a person's name? If it's a number, then it could be a cost price. It could be a date, right? Or it could be an age, anything like that. You must predict your answer. Sometimes you will be able to predict your answers. Now, last thing I would like to say, most students, they do complain that sometimes, you know, we are unable to identify whether the answer has S or ES written or not. Well, it's pretty simple. In terms of fill-ups, you will be seeing articles written before the fill-up. If you see an article written A or N, you know immediately that your answer has to be a singular noun. However, if the words like many, some, few, a large number of is written, then you know the answer has to be a plural noun. Stick to more tips that will be shared with you at Study Smart. Join us today and find out the difference why students are always able to get excellent scores here. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day ahead.